All right, welcome everybody to Series E. This is week three, and of course, it's open day because it is Tuesday. I'm Jamerson, joined by T Squared, and we're about to break down eight games of action. Range shots raining in, and it looks like Volko has already gotten the knock onto Kaj, and they want to just get rolled over like that. Now, we do have another team coming in. It's Nestle Purelock coming in for the third party. Well, it's going to be a 3v2 fight as Nestle Pure Life are now getting pushed here. Great shots out with that massive though from Dracos as he hits for 70 here, 112, and he gets the knock onto Haculo. And so now things are getting dangerous. <laughs> Let me just, uh... Again, baby. All right, welcome back to Series E as we do have the final results of the evening after eight games. Let's go ahead and take away who took first and second place tonight. Of course, no surprise to anyone. Team Rice Krispies take first place. We are moving on to a week, uh, excuse me, day two of week number three. It is our pro night. And so we have invited teams coming in, joining our um, our partner teams here. I'm James Jamerson Lee, joined once again by Tom T Squared. Taylor, Tom, how are you doing today? Yeah, it looks like, a, you know, it's very difficult to chase after a Pathfinder, and so they don't want to send backs on its own. NPL, though, and a fight over here at Search Through. It has dominated that fight. That nature from Stink was ridiculous. Successful for Team Nestle Pure Life. You have the Wraith coming down here, try to go for that abduct, but nothing really working here. No, it's the port, excuse me. Uh, B My name is Dracos. I play for Team NPL. I'm about to try the Nestle Pure Life Plus for the first time. <sighs> Quite good. Quite good. Refreshing. That is some quality H2O. Uh, I would have to go ahead and say my favorite one is definitely the Blackberry. It was a... Uh, right away, the other ones have... Uh, Good flavor, but I would definitely go with the blackberry. So let's not waste any time. Let's go straight over to the leaderboard to see who our ultimate winners are. And it is going to be Team Nestle Pure Life taking the win here during Nestle Pure Life Week. Congratulations with a 75 point victory. But take a look at second place, Tom. It's a three way tie between Pringles, Liquid, and Cooler Esports. That is, that's going to do it for us. Have a good night and have a good weekend. This week, we have Nestle Pure Life. Why? Because not only was it Nestle Pure Life week, but they're the champions from yesterday's pro day. Welcome, guys. How are you guys feeling after yesterday? Pretty good. Doing good. Feeling, feeling good. I see everyone's got their Nestle Pure Life stacked up over towards the side. Ronnie's got it over his shoulder. Bambino's got it over his shoulder. Draco's, he drank all of his because he was doing yeah. the, flip, the water flip challenge. So oh, yeah. uh, not too surprised there. Impressive stuff. But hey, congratulations, guys. It was really fun watching you guys put it together on the pro day. Let's start with Bambino. What do you guys think about Olympus in season seven? Um, honestly, I mean, I, everybody else can agree with me that the map, uh, comp wise, it, it needs some work. I feel like the med kits and all that need to be reverted because we did have uh, some teams sitting outside of Storm just med kitting and trying to go for placement. But other than that, uh, it's something that, you know, it comes along like with the weeks that we have to get used to with like rotations and uh, people are still trying to figure out what metas to use. Um, right now, it's, we're, it's in a tough spot. So, I mean, you just got to keep playing on it and get used to it, I guess. Yeah, I think one of the main things is when you're going in crafting, having med kits inside the crafting area and having it be so cheap and affordable is pretty difficult to deal with when you have the storm damage being reverted. But the good thing about the crafting is it constantly gets changed out and there's new materials that go inside. So hopefully it's not continually being med kits over and over again. Otherwise, that's going to be hard to deal with. Dracos, I noticed that you were playing Pathfinder for a little bit. You were doing fairly well and you guys were still in the top three, but you decided that you wanted to switch over to Gibraltar, I think, halfway through. What was the thought process on that and how did it work out for you guys? 
Uh, well, I really just I've been playing a lot of Gibraltar and ranked, and uh, I don't know. I just wanted to see what I could do with them. Um, Bambino is a good Pathfinder and Bloodhound, so I mean, it really wouldn't have made too much of a difference. You know, we're not really switching things up too much. Um, you know, so I just wanted to play some Gibby. So uh, it's not the Bambino was like you know bad on Gib uh, Gibraltar, but I just wanted to get some games in with them. And I it think out, so. I think that uh, I think that more it was more so like we knew that we had to you know get points and we had to play it safe, so we went the safe route and we pulled a Gibraltar out. I think that's what really helped us out a lot, and we played it smart, you know. So that was actually a good decision that we did that uh, towards, you know, the, uh, the halftime, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think if you're going to run a composition, it has to be Bloodhound Gibraltar or Path Gibraltar. We're seeing a couple other people still bust out the Watts, and Intel was doing pretty mm -hmm. decent on that, but they weren't able to get a lot of kill points throughout all that. And I was explaining during the cast that if they were playing a character like Bloodhound, they would be able to go out there and maybe seek third parties or find weaknesses in other teams that were potentially getting reses, et cetera, et cetera. But either way, everyone's kind of developing their own certain way. Gibraltar definitely seems to be a staple, though, and almost 100% pick rate going forward for Olympus because of the amount of open area there is. And also when you're forced to play edge, it's really important. Ronnie, what was it like for you guys in that final game, knowing that you guys were in first place, only had to really play it safe, and everyone was going to be charging it uh, towards the end. Were you guys really excited to, you know, switch it up a little bit instead of going and playing aggressive and third party and taking a lot of team fights? You guys kind of were in the first time, first time ever that you guys were in that position where all you had to do is lock it down, get a couple kill points, and get top five. What was that like for you, Ronnie? Well, when we landed, we knew we had a beacon. So when we found out the first ring, and then we found out the second ring was honest too, we decided just to chill inside carrier which is where we land so we just kept on scanning the beacon bubble beacon and we knew that we had to play at the edge of the zone and play where no teams really were and that's what we did and we got a decent amount of points to uh, help secure our spot first so bambi you know you guys went from one of the last teams to qualify for series e now three weeks in you find yourself not only on the top on one of the days, but on top of Pro Day, which is one of the most stacked lobbies we have in all of Apex when you combine the EU Pro teams and the NA Pro teams. What's Series E been like for you guys? Do you feel like that's attributed to a little bit of your improvement as a team and your guys' success? And did you guys think that you would be able to get a dub on the Pro Day in Week 3? Uh, honestly, um, like the experience, it's, it's good experience for us. Uh, that's our only experience, really. Um, we knew that, you know, Pro Day coming up, you know, we we I, I personally thought that we wasn't going to do as good as we did, but I've been seeing improvement out of the team. And like I've been telling the guys, it was like, you know, we can't just keep going for placement. We have to go for kills. And that's where I took, you know, I stepped in and was like, yo, we need to go third party this. We need to push this. Like I took action like we need to fight this, you know, and that's where we started getting kills. And that's how we ended up winning, because we took action. Uh, I'm like, I told him, I was like, I'm just tired of trying to play for placement. I'm trying to, I'm tired of like, you know, being shy and trying to shy away from teams. You know, uh, the top teams, most of their points come from, you know, their, their KP. So um, I was confident that we was going to do good. Uh, but I didn't think we was going to, you know, turn around and win the tourney, which is huge, you know, for us. Cause we came, we came from yeah. making, I would say 30 points, maybe 30, 35, 40 points. Now we're getting 70 plus, you know, 65 plus your points now. So uh, it's only up from here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's, that's really solid that you guys noticed that. It's not just playing for placement. It's that you have to take team fights. Otherwise, teams just really aren't going to respect you. Look at a team like Complexity. Why are they so respected? It's because their team fighting skills are so strong. They've always been absolutely insane when it comes to it. They'll send it on teams no matter where they are. If you land over at Refinery, they land Epicenter, they're going to go and charge you. And it's really about imposing your will and kind of just striking fear in other teams and making you realize, oh, wait, like we can't really go and take this. This is a really good team. So, Dracos, what has it been like for you guys to go and develop that where it's no longer Ronnie running away from the fights and ratting it out? It's you guys actually putting it together as a full three-man squad, all holding your own and working really well together. Has that been what your guys' main focus has been over the last couple of weeks? Uh, I think that's just really a improvement in terms of confidence. Uh, 
you know, we started, you know, winning these team fights. And so uh, we really just don't have that mentality anymore of, oh, we got to run. Oh, you know, Ronnie, get out. We just stick it out and feel confident that we could win that fight. And um, that's why you're not seeing uh, the E Rat Ronnie cam anymore is, uh, you know, we just stick it out. If we die, we die. Um, just try to win that fight and fight for that spot and uh, quit, you know, being so timid. Uh, but that comes with experience. So we're uh, learning. I mean, this is our first uh, tournament experience, so um, which is a Series E. This is our, really our only comp experience. Um, so we're getting better. Ronnie, why do you think yesterday was so much different than Tuesday where the lobby wasn't nearly as stacked and you guys came out and just performed so well? Because that is one of the toughest lobbies that we have. Do you think that you guys were playing, you know, full full steam ahead yesterday was that your a game and can we expect to see your a game moving forward yeah yesterday we just played like straight up we just pushed third parties that we need to we weren't playing scared like yesterday i didn't really feel like playing i was like let's just push everything you know because why not and we had a good first game that was kept our motivation going up from there and after that first game we just kept on playing the way we did playing passive aggressive but more aggressive than usual and after that and we just kept it going pretty much and in the future we will be playing more aggressive 100 percent. i'd love to hear it bambino what do you think that you've seen from improvements not from yourself but individually from dracos and ronnie is there anything that you've seen over the last month or two that has kind of you know surprised you in terms of what they may be, they've been able to do uh first thing i say is probably uh the morale like uh we if you tune in our comms sometimes, uh, we would uh, like argue with each other, uh, me and Draco. <laughs> but he's been, you know, he's been getting better with it. And honestly, it's it's good for morale. Um, uh, Ronnie, I would say uh, Ronnie's been he's been listening a lot to the the comms. Uh, he's been talking more like I would say a, a couple of weeks ago. He wasn't he wasn't really talking a lot. He wouldn't call out that much. But Ronnie's been coming around and he's been calling out a lot. So comms is uh, very viable, you know, when it comes to uh, comp play. Um, I mean, we're just honestly, we just comms like our, I feel like our comms is what caused us to win attorney. And we just we just communicate it so well. So I would say that's that's the main key. All right, Dracos, last question. Are you guys staying hydrated? Is Nestle Pure Life attributing towards your guys' win in Series E? That's what I need to know. Uh, I would say you could definitely attribute uh, some success. Um, you know, we're we're staying hydrated, thinking better, calming better, and uh, we actually funny. I mean, we all had a Nestle Pure Life before the uh, tourney, so um, <laughs> I guess you could say so. Uh, whatever percentage you may attribute that, but um, definitely helped out. Well, uh, a large percentage of our body is water, and a lot of our Earth makes up. A lot of water as well. So, guys, make sure you stay hydrated. Make sure you drink your Nestle Pure Life because I want to see more dubs coming out from your team. Congratulations. Doing it big Thanks. on your week. Couldn't be more proud of you guys. We'll see you guys in ranked over the weekend as well. Try not to kill me outside of labs or wherever it was last time. But that's it for Final Circle this time, guys. That's Team Nestle Pure Life, your winners from this week's Pro Day. We'll catch you next week, Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time for our Open Day.